proprioceptors and spinal reflexes the spinal reflexes actually is a part of we are saying spinal reflexes so it is a part of motor system but still we are combining with the semper sensory system because the proprioceptors are responsible for these reflexes so when you discuss them together it will be much easier so what are the most important proprioceptors in the body there are two important proprioceptors in the body one is the muscle spindle another one is golgi tendon organ so this muscle spindle is responsible for the most important reflex in the body which is a stretch reflex it is also responsible for withdrawal reflex whereas the golgi tendon organ which is also called as the gto gto is responsible for the inverse stretch reflex we have to know everything about this proprioceptors and spinal reflexes every single point has been asked in mcqs or they are present in the options so once we have to eliminate the options we have to know this proprioceptors and spinal reflexes so coming to their location what is the location of muscle spindle and golgi tendon organ suppose if there is a muscle there are fibers the, that is forming the muscle fibers the major fibers what is this called as these are called as the extra fusal fibers these are called as extra fusal fibers extra fusal means it is outside extra fusal fibers this is nothing but our muscle fibers this is our common muscle fibers which we talk whenever we study about a muscle like act, actin myosin elements all the elements are present in this muscle fiber only now coming to the another one which is the which is present inside the muscle it is not present in the outer muscle layers it is present deep inside the muscle which is also called as intrafusal fibers intrafusal fibers this is intrafusal fibers see it is present deep inside the muscle it is present deep inside the muscle this is the structure of intrafusal fibers the center structure and there is one more area we have highlighted here this area what is this area it is present in intrafusal or extrafusal fibers first tell me it is present in extrafusal fibers it is present in the ends of the extrafusal fibers here it is what the organ located is gto that is our golgi tendon organ this golgi tendon organ please remember one thing about it it is not present in the intrafusal fibers it is present in the extrafusal fibers it is present in the extrafusal fibers at the ends of the extrafusal fibers it is present at the ends of the extrafusal fibers now we will study about the intrafusal fibers as well as the golgi tendon organ so coming to the muscle spindle structure muscle spindle is the other name for our intrafusal fiber this is nothing but our muscle spindle muscle spindle muscles this muscle spindle structure we have to study in detail this muscle spindle now we have taken the inside part and expanded it so there is a slender structure which is going like this the line and followed by that there is a bigger uh, encapsulated region so it has two fibers one is called as the nuclear bag fibers it looks like a bag it looks like a pouch it looks like a bag so this is called as nuclear bag fibers and surrounding this region there is a nuclear chain fibers it is looking like a chain that's why it is called as nuclear chain fibers why there is two types of uh, receptors what is the function of this intrafusal fiber this intrafusal fiber constantly senses the stretch of the muscle length of the muscle tension of the muscle so all this are sensed by the intrafusal fibers they should constantly provide information about the muscular activity so they are like the sensors inside the muscle so this nuclear back fibers they sense both static as well as dynamic uh, stretch or dynamic stretch whereas nuclear chain fibers they will detect only the static stretch so static position of the fibers so during movement which who is sensing it during movement only one person can sense it that is the nuclear back fibers which is doing the dynamic part during movement only nuclear back fibers can sense it now coming to the afferents and efferents from this muscle splinters so from the nuclear back as well as the nuclear chain one fiber goes as an efferent so whenever there is a stimulus to this intrafusal fibers they have to be sensed by the body and they have to be sensed this afferent is the 1a fibers 1a fibers this is also called as anulo spiral ending because it looks like this spiral ending like this that's why it's called anulo spiral ending and there is another ending which is called as flower spray ending this flower spray ending which is also called as type 2 fibers they also carry the impulse but they carry only from the nuclear chain fibers 
whereas this 1A fibers carry from both nuclear back as well as nuclear chain. So this is the most important fibers, 1A fibers. Just remember this 1A fiber is the afferent. And there is one more efferent to this pathway. This efferent is called as A gamma fibers. This efferent is called as A gamma fibers. This is the efferent for the intrafusal fibers. So the intrafusal fiber is like this and there is an efferent to it. Efferent is coming like this and it is innovating this end points alone. It is innovating this end points alone. So just uh, I'll explain more about this A delta fibers, sorry A gamma fibers. What happens whenever there is a stretch? If I stretch the end, what will happen? It will indirectly activate the 1A fibers. So this can indirectly activate the 1A fibers that by stretching it. So this is an efferent which is attached to the ends of it. Now we have to discuss everything with respect to the stretch reflexes that is the reflex arc patterns. So what is a reflex arc? So whenever any stimulus is given, it will go to the spinal cord and it will come back. Again, it will contract the muscle. So this is the reflex arc. So, so the reflex has start with a sensory receptor. So reflex has starts with a sensory receptor. Followed by that, there should be an afferent. There should be an afferent to carry it. And finally, it will reach the spinal cord and form a synapse. They will form a synapse. And from the synapse, there has to be an efferent. It is coming back to the muscle and it can contract the muscle. So these are nothing but the stretch reflexes we see. The knee jerk reflexes, the bicep reflexes, everything we see, it is based on the reflex arc only. So it will have an efferent. We will see all this. What is the afferent? What is the efferent and everything. And finally, it will be coming to the effector. Effector is nothing but our muscle. So now coming to the reflexes, the reflexes can be classified into two. One is the monosynaptic reflex, another one is polysynaptic reflex. As the term indicates, if there is only one synapse, if there is the presence of only one synapse, it is called as monosynaptic reflex. What is the classical example? The classical example is nothing but our stretch reflex, which is the knee jerk reflex. Stretch reflex, we can talk about any reflex, but knee jerk is one of the most important reflex among them. Then coming to the polysynaptic reflexes, if there is involvement of two or more synapses, more than two also we call it as polysynaptic reflex. What does it mean? There should be a synapse here and one more fiber will come. They will form a synapse here and one more fiber will come. So these kinds of synapses, here there is one synapse, here there is another synapse. So these kinds of multiple synapses is called as a polysynaptic reflex. So basically they have interneurons which is connecting one neuron to the other neuron. And the classical example for this is the withdrawal reflex. So coming to the stretch reflex, what happens in stretch reflex? All of us know whenever we strike it with the knee hammer, there is stretch of the muscle. The stretch of this is sensed and finally we see a contraction. Whenever contraction is happening, sometimes we see the action also. The bicep jerk, there will be flexion because that is the action of the biceps. So what happens in a stretch reflex? The stretch reflex, we are trying to stretch, stretch the muscle. So whenever the muscle is stretched, the intrafusal fibers, they are also stretched. So this stretch will be sensed by the intrafusal fibers, the 1A fibers. The 1A fibers now will travel along to the spinal cord. They will reach the spinal cord and from there they will form a synapse. And from the synapse they will give the efferent fibers. And this efferent fibers, they have a specific name that is nothing but our alpha motor neurons. That is a motor neuron. So this alpha motor neuron will come and Innovate what? Intra or extrafusal fibers. Now it has to go to the extrafusal fibers to cause the muscle contraction because that is the basic muscle fiber. So it will go to the extrafusal fibers and cause the muscle contraction. So this alpha motor neuron will cause the contraction of the muscle. So this reflex is also called as myotactic reflex. And how did they identify that it has only one synapse initially? Right now we have many advanced techniques to measure it. But initially, they calculated for a synaptic delay. Like how much time there was a delay between the striking and the contraction of the muscle. And it was found that it is very, very less. It was very, very less. So in this time duration, only one synapse can be crossed. So that's why they found out there is only one synaptic delay in a simple stretch reflex. And this is a one synaptic or the monosynaptic type of stretch reflex. Now coming to the withdrawal reflex. Withdrawal reflex, what happens? Even during our stretch reflex, there is stretch of this muscle and contraction of this muscle and there will be relaxation of the antagonist muscle. The muscle which is doing the action is called agonist. The opposite muscle is called as antagonist. So this will contract, the other thing will relax. This type of reflex is called as polysynaptic reflex. There is contraction of the flexes and inhibition of the extensors.
even whenever there is a very strong stimulus there can happen a crossed extensor response so for example we are touching something you are suddenly uh, moving your limb and sometimes we have to move the other limb to balance our body position this kind of balancing is called as the extensor response like crossed extensor response so what is happening here this 1a fibers they are going to the spinal cord they are giving it to the flexors that we have seen not only that they also give the interneurons you here you can see here this interneuron is going to relax the extensors so this type of multiple synapses is called as the polysynaptic reflex here the example is withdrawal reflex now this is all about the one a fibers these are the afferents which are going now coming to the efferent what is the only efferent we saw which is the a gamma fibers so this a gamma fibers is the efferent which is coming here so what they do they contract the peripheral part of it so if the peripheral part of one a fibers are already being contracted like the interfacial fibers are already contracted so what will happen whenever we strike there is already some contraction so it will cause more of contraction and finally we will find a excessive reflex so this is called as the this is called as a, this has a specific name which is called as the gendra 6 menu what is the usefulness of this this increases the sensitivity of stretch reflex it is already providing a baseline stretch to the intrafusal fibers so what is happening here there is an increased sensitivity to stretch that's why we try this before do enabling any reflexes as absent so whenever any reflex is present after doing the genera 6 menu clinically what do we call we call the reflex is present with reinforcement we are doing some reinforcement and reflex is happening because of uh, because of that there is sensitivity of the stretch receptor and the maneuver is called as genera 6 menu and what is the fibers responsible it is the efferent fibers which is the gamma fibers so there is something called as alpha gamma coactivation whatever we saw till now that is the alpha gamma coactivation not only that whenever any impulses from the higher centers is coming they can activate both the alpha and the gamma and gamma whenever it is activated what will happen they will indirectly increase the sensitivity of 1a fibers and indirectly cause a stretch reflex so this excitatory input signals which comes both to the alpha and as well as the gamma they are activated simultaneously whenever they are activated simultaneously see what will happen there will be a coactivation because indirectly this gamma fibers they will increase the sensitivity of 1a fibers and 1a fibers is going to activate the alpha fibers alpha motor neuron for cause the final contraction so whenever both of them are activated together there is a exaggerated response or a better response can be seen so that is called as alpha go gamma coactivation now coming to the golgi tendon organ this where is it present this is present in the extrafusal fibers that is very very important Golgi tendon organ is responsible for inverse stretch reflex. So, what is the inverse happening here? What is normal stretch reflex? Whenever there is a stretch of a muscle, it is going to cause contraction. Now, whenever there is a severe stretch of the muscle, we are not talking about the normal stretch. Whenever there is a severe stretch of the muscle, there will be relaxation of the muscle. This is completely opposite to the theory that we see now. So, whenever there is a strong stretch, what is happening? There is relaxation of the muscle. Why this should happen? whenever it goes for a severe stretch it can get avulsed from the bone it can get torn from the bone itself suppose a weight lifters we have seen some of the times weight lifters when they lift it suddenly what will happen suddenly they will drop it this is that there could be an activation of golgi tendon reflex because there too much stretch what they will cause they will cause relaxation of the muscle because it is to prevent the injury to the muscle so what happens in golgi tendon organ this golgi tendon organ basically is inhibiting the alpha motor neuron previously 1a fibers were activating the alpha motor neuron it is going to inhibit the alpha motor neuron this golgi tendon organ you might ask me the question why it is not normally happening why it is happening only during a severe stretch or an extreme stretch it is because the sensitivity of the fibers is very very low we need a heavy stretch or a huge stretch to cause this activation so this is all about the uh, spinal cord proprioceptors and spinal reflexes